Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Van Dusen, and I'm a higher education specialist in the Education and Research Group at Esri Canada. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to design mapping apps using prototypes, including how to create sketches, wireframes, and mockups. We'll also take a look at how to test your prototypes and your finished apps with users. Prototyping and testing are important parts of the user interface design process since they allow you to improve your designs and to get feedback from users even before you start building an app or writing any code. This video is the second resource in our learning path on user interface design. In the previous video for this learning path, we looked at some general principles and definitions for user interface design user experience design, and related concepts like usability, accessibility, and discoverability. We also discussed some specific factors for the design of mapping applications and some of the tools that ArcGIS includes for designing web mapping apps. There's a link to this video in the description below. If you haven't watched this, I would encourage you to go back and watch it first, since it provides some context for the larger design process that prototyping and testing fit into. It also discusses some design principles to keep in mind while creating prototypes. So as we get started, we need to define what a prototype is exactly and look at the different forms that they can take. And this idea of creating prototypes is not specific to user interface design, but the main idea is still the same. The company UXPIN, which develops prototyping software, defines a prototype as a simulation or a sample version of a final product, which is used for testing prior to launch. It's like designing a building using blueprints, physical models, or virtual 3D models prior to actually constructing the building in the real world. And creating user interface prototypes is important for the same reason. It's much easier to make changes to the UI design while it's still a prototype, as opposed to after the app has already been developed. It allows you to get feedback as early as possible and to iterate on the design, that is, to create new versions of the design by improving on previous versions. And ideally, by this point, you've already conducted user research, which we touched on briefly in the last video. So you have an idea of things like what your users ultimately need to accomplish with the app, how they understand the technology you're using, and the context in which your app will be used. Related to this, we also have sketches, wireframes, and mockups, which are created at different points in the design process and can be turned into prototypes. There's sometimes a bit of overlap with how these terms are used and with prototyping in general, but there's a useful article from UX writer Nick Babich that defines everything in a way that seems to match the consensus. You can find this at the link in the video description. Sketches, wireframes, and mockups all have different levels of visual fidelity, which refers to how similar they look to the finished design. As we'll see throughout this video, the level of fidelity that you use depends on what you're trying to figure out or communicate or test throughout the design process. So if you're a GIS user, and if you have some experience with app templates and app builders like the ones in ArcGIS Online, you might be wondering if it's worthwhile to create sketches, wireframes, mockups, or prototypes first, since the app templates and builders let you create an app visually on screen. And yes, I would still recommend taking the time for some of this, at least to do some sketching first. With app templates and builders, it's easy to create an app by choosing a template or layout and putting different GIS tools into it. And this is great, but the steps in this video help you think through your design first, based on what your users ultimately need to get done using the app, and how everything should be laid out on screen to make this as easy as possible for them. Once you've come up with some design ideas, you can use these to inform which sort of app template or layout you choose for your app and how you configure it. And even if your design ideas aren't an exact match for any of the templates, they can still serve as a useful starting point. When you're getting started with designing an app, you'll want to start with the lowest level of fidelity possible, which is just creating some simple sketches of the app on paper. It's tempting to start creating a polished design on the computer as soon as possible, but sketching the design by hand first helps you to generate a range of ideas and to experiment with new ideas quickly, 
a process referred to as ideation. Sketching helps you think through the design by considering the many different forms the interface could take and finding a few to work with in more detail later. Don't worry about creating really polished drawings. The lines don't need to be straight, and you don't need to draw all of the graphics or maps or write out all of the text. At this point, we're just trying to come up with ideas for the overall structure and layout for each of the different aspects of the interface. Once you've done some sketching and found some ideas you want to focus on, you can start to develop these in more detail using wireframes. Wireframes can be considered anywhere from low fidelity to medium fidelity. They're a bit cleaner and more detailed than hand-drawn sketches, but they still don't include all the visual detail of the final product, since we're still focusing on the overall layout and structure. Because of this, wireframes are often compared to building blueprints, and the bottom two wireframes here even have sort of a low fidelity sketch style, and this can help to generate discussion and emphasize that the design is still a work in progress. There are many programs available that you can use for wireframing, such as Balsamic, which I'll be using for the examples in this video, as well as Mock Plus and Mock Flow. Compared to regular graphics programs or diagramming tools, wireframing programs like Balsamic provide you with UI templates that you can just drag and drop into your wireframes, and this makes it much easier to focus on developing your ideas. As well, if you're using Balsamic for wireframing, Michael Geig, the UI UX lead for Esri's Professional Services Group, has put together a useful set of Balsamic templates for different types of maps and map controls. You can download this from wireframes2go.com or from within Balsamic. There's also a link for this in the video description below. Once you've determined the layout and structure of your app, you can move on to the visual design using mockups. These have high visual fidelity and can look very similar to the final product, and this can be helpful if you need to present your design in a more polished form, such as a presentation for stakeholders on a project, or if you're doing something unique with your app's visual design. Some of the most common programs for creating mockups include Figma, which I'll be using for the examples in this video, as well as Sketch and Adobe XD. One benefit to these programs is that if you're designing an interface for a particular platform, like Android or iOS, you can download UI templates from the platform developers and use these in your mockups, like I'm doing right now with Android templates from Google. Similarly, Esri has templates available for the Calcite design system, which we looked at in the previous video. So these can be useful if you're designing a custom web mapping app that uses the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. There's a link for this in the video description as well. And once we've created sketches, wireframes, or mockups, we can assemble these into prototypes. As mentioned earlier, with prototypes, users can actually try out the design and get a feel for how the final product will actually work. And you can do this just with paper sketches or paper wireframes, by switching between the sketches or wireframes by hand as someone pretends to click on them. Or you can build interactive prototypes with a wide variety of prototyping software available online. If you're using Balsamic, you can turn your wireframes into prototypes by creating links between them. For example, if you create one wireframe that shows a widget closed, and a second wireframe that shows the widget open, you can create a link in the first wireframe that opens the second wireframe, and vice versa. So this way, you can create something that works similarly to a real interface without writing any code. However, to build something with a lot of interactivity, you need to create a lot of separate wireframes and a lot of links. Prototyping tools such as Figma give you quite a bit more flexibility. You can create links from one mockup to another, like we did in Balsamic, but you can also set mockups to appear over top of other mockups, so you don't need to create as many different versions of a single screen as you would in Balsamic. And it lets you make your wireframes more interactive. You can let users drag or hover their mouse or use the keyboard in addition to clicking. 
Figma also shows you the relationship between all of the mockups in your prototype in a sort of a flowchart view. Regardless of which program you use to create your prototypes, it's also easy for prototypes of mapping apps in particular to get a bit complicated to develop. However, remember that you don't need to simulate every single action that can happen with the interface. For example, if you're prototyping a web mapping app, you don't necessarily need to simulate basic operations like zooming or panning the map or turning layers on or off. The exception would be if you specifically need to test these things with users or demonstrate them on screen with your prototype. Finally, it's important that we test our UI designs with potential users. Users will always see the design differently than we do as the designers, so it's crucial that we not rely on our own assumptions about what works best. It's also a good idea to test the design not just after the app has been developed, but throughout the design and development process so that we can catch any potential issues as early as possible. One of the most commonly used and most effective methods for testing a user interface is usability testing, sometimes also called user testing. In usability testing, we test the interface with potential users by giving them example tasks to complete and by asking them to verbalize everything that they're thinking as they use the interface, which is known as the Think Aloud protocol. Hearing the user's thought process gives us insight into things like where they expect to find a certain feature, if it works differently than they expected it to, and if there's anything that they find confusing or frustrating. You can perform a usability test by just sitting beside someone and recording what they say and do while completing the tasks. You can also do this remotely with video conferencing and screen sharing. Here's an example for an app that allows users to create points on a map for trees affected by the emerald ash borer. This is an invasive species that has caused damage to many trees in southern Ontario and surrounding areas. We've created a prototype of this app in Balsamic that we'll test with a potential user. So you are walking through a local park and you notice a tree that might be affected by the emerald ash borer since you notice that the upper half of the tree has fewer leaves and the bark is covered in woodpecker holes. Use the app to add information for this tree, including a photo from your smartphone. OK. So I'm going to go to the pencil because to me that means I'm going to edit something. Add tree point. Top a location on the map to create a tree point. Okay, so first thing I think, well, I don't see a map right now, so how am I going to tap a location on the map? I actually am tapping on a button to create a point. Now, okay, now I can create a point on the map. Um, I guess yeah. I could just find my location. Okay, I put in my username or it's already got it in there. Something that's important to remember with usability testing is that we're not testing the user. We're testing the interface with users as the test participants. It's a good idea to remind users at the beginning of the test that we're not testing them or their abilities. We're testing the interface to see how well it meets their needs and expectations. And there are no right or wrong answers. For example, if we find out that the users can't find something easily in the interface, this isn't a failure on their part. It's an opportunity for us, as the designers, to figure out how to improve the design. So, for the Emerald Ash Borer app, there was that instruction at the beginning that the user found confusing about adding a point to the map. And, rather than considering this a mistake on the user's part, or rather than rewording the instructions, we could try to make the interface more intuitive. Maybe we could prompt the users to add a point to the map before we open the rest of the form, or maybe we could embed a map into the form itself. So we can change this in our prototype and then go back and test it with users again. One of my favorite sources for information on UX and UI design in general is the Nielsen Norman Group's website. 
In particular, they have a great set of resources on usability testing, as well as Jacob Nielsen's 10 Usability Heuristics, which is a set of guidelines that you can use while designing and evaluating user interfaces. Author Steve Krug has also put together some resources that you may find helpful when running usability tests, such as an introduction script, some prompts for the facilitator to use, and consent forms for participants. Finally, I showed the Balsamic Wireframes program earlier in this video, and Balsamic has a wealth of information on their website for learning how to create wireframes as well as for how this fits into the overall user experience design process. There are links for all of these in the video description below. So in this video, we looked at several different phases of the user interface design process, including sketching, wireframing, mockups, and prototyping. We looked at a couple of the software programs that can be used to create these, as well as the differences in visual fidelity, and some considerations when creating these for mapping apps in particular. Finally, we looked at how to test the design of your prototypes or apps with users through usability testing, as well as the sort of insights that this can provide for improving your app's interface. Next in this learning path will be a set of tutorials on developing user interfaces for web mapping applications and ArcGIS Pro add-ins. On behalf of all of us in the Education and Research Group here at Esri Canada, thanks for watching.